Welcome to Cleveland, the ninth oldest zoo in America. Today, the zoo features a mix of historical and modern attractions. The primate cat and aquatics building once displayed one of the most impressive collections of rare cats and primates, while the African elephant crossing is one of the nation's finest, newer habitats for the world's largest land animal. The wilderness track has wolves, beavers, bears, and tigers, with old-fashioned habitats intermixed with the latest in zoo designs. Like the zoo as a whole, the focus of today's video is a bit of both. The Rainforest just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Opening in 1992, it transformed two acres into what is still the zoo's most iconic exhibit, immersing visitors into the tropical forest of Africa, Asia, and South America. Between its two stories, the building is home to around 600 animals and more than 10,000 plants. The lower level primarily focuses on the smaller life forms of the dark forest floor, while the upper level features larger and generally more popular species. Be sure to stay to the end to find out what's in store for the rainforest in the future. And with that, let's begin the tour. The entry path to the rainforest, which I chose to film on an appropriately rainy day, is actually located before the zoo's entrance gate by the ticket booths. The short walk through the woods helps build anticipation and also gives me a chance to share a few additional fun facts about the complex. The rainforest opening marked the first time the zoo added ambient sound effects to enhance the visitor experience. Among the building's thousands of plants is Cronus, a 28-year-old corpse flower that bloomed for the fifth time last summer when it was temporarily exhibited near the Rhino Reserve. Corpse flowers only bloom for 24 to 48 hours during which the plant emits a foul odor reminiscent of rotting flesh. And with that fun thought in everyone's mind, we've arrived at the glass-domed rainforest building. Moving inside, the rainforest makes a big first impression, welcoming guests with a 25-foot cascading waterfall, surrounded by Mayan temple walls. Within the walls are a few pocket exhibits for New World primates. From right to left, they house the critically endangered Pied Tamarin, the more well-known Golden Lion Tamarin, the White-Fronted Marmoset, and the Goldies Marmoset. The rainforest can be traversed using several different routes, but I like to continue to the left through the gift shop to enter the lower forest. The hallway is lined by glass windows that look up into an exhibit whose tree-dwelling inhabitants are best viewed from the upper floor. Entering into the main room straight ahead is the centerpiece of the lower floor, the Tropical Rainstorm Exhibit. Swimming in the moat are tinfoil barbs and pangaseous catfish, while on land, where Indian crested porcupines once roamed, there's now the nearly identical Cape Porcupine of Africa. I don't know why the change was made, and I doubt most guests would even notice. The Cape Porcupine doesn't exactly fit the rainforest theme though, since while they can be found in a number of different habitats, they are most commonly associated with savannas and grasslands. If you wait around long enough, you'll see where the exhibit gets its name, as at regular intervals, this island experiences a simulated storm. Opposite the tropical rainstorm, another of the lower floor's larger habitats is a sloping riverbank where you can see Asian turtles like the fly river turtle and spotted pond turtle. But swimming with them is something much larger, the Indian Gario. One of the largest crocodilians topping out at 20 feet in length, the Gario is critically endangered due to damming and diversion of the rivers they depend on for habitat and food causing them to see a 98% decrease in their population in the last century. 
If you're wondering why the turtles aren't in any danger living with such a large crocodilian, the Gario's slender snout is specially designed for feeding on fish, which is why they are also known as the fish-eating crocodile. Past the riverbank is a corner dedicated to the forest floor's smallest life forms. There's walking sticks, three kinds of tarantulas, giant African millipedes, Madagascar hissing cockroaches, and when you see tubes like these, it's usually a sign that you'll find thousands, if not millions, of leaf cutter ants. Their specialized jaws allow them to saw off pieces of leaves, which are then taken back to the nest and transform into fungus gardens from which the ants harvest food. These little ants are insanely strong for their size, able to carry leaves that are 50 times their own body weight, which would be the equivalent of a human lifting a car. The next wall features a host of more standard reptile terrariums. I didn't get much action from their cold-blooded inhabitants, but here's a rundown of what the exhibits contain. At the end of the hall, as you round the corner, is a long, dimly lit habitat for African straw-colored fruit bats, one of a subset of large bats that is often referred to as flying foxes, due to the somewhat canine-like appearance of their faces. Straw-colored fruit bats are found widespread throughout Africa, with roosting groups sometimes numbering in the millions. With over 1,200 species, bats are one of the most prolific groups of mammals, and they really do deserve a little more love, since many species help control pesky insect populations, while others, like the frugivorous straw-colored fruit bat, play important roles in pollination and seed dispersal in their native range. Opposite the bats is a standalone tank for blue poison dart frogs, along with the African pond, home to the clown squeaker catfish and jewel cichlids. The last set of terrariums in the lower forest hold more amphibians, like the climbing toad, Amazon milk frog, Panamanian harlequin frog, and some suspiciously green golden poison dart frogs. Through the doors, you're transported into a greenhouse known as the Medicine Trail, which features rainforest plants that are used in traditional medicines around the world. You could take the stairs or the elevator, but we'll be traveling to the upper forest using the Kapok Tree, a rainforest giant that can grow as tall as 200 feet high.
When you reach the top, you're brought into a research hut, signaling that the upper floor is going to be a more immersive experience. On the right are a set of glass windows that look into the former sloth exhibit, but now you can find Jenna the Binturong. One of the rainforest newer residents who joined the zoo in 2021. There's a lot of fun facts I could share about the Binturong, but I'll go with the fact that nobody actually knows what the word Binturong means, since the language it originated from is now extinct. Across the hut is another window which gives a preview of the rainforest star family. As you exit out of the research hut, over on the right is a habitat for a prehensile-tailed porcupine, who didn't want to be filmed. And seemingly connected is an exhibit for red rumped agoutis, who weren't a fan of the camera either. It may take you a minute to realize you're actually in a free flight aviary. In the trees, look for roseate spoonbills, scarlet ibises, and the crested oropendola. In a small pond on the right, you can find white-faced whistling ducks, ring teals, and the yellow-spotted Amazon river turtle. Others, like the bleeding heart dove, aren't shy about wandering onto the path and sharing your space. On the ground on the left, you can see capybaras, who also weren't in a great spot to film. And exiting out of the aviary, there's a cave-like window that usually gives the best view of the capybara's roommate, the giant anteater. An ant's worst nightmare, equipped with a two feet long tongue. Although the anteater will occasionally forego their namesake meal of choice, to supplement their diet with fruits like mango and papaya. Next up is the small cat corner. There wasn't a lot of action in the first habitat, but I was able to see their fishing cat, a notorious hide and seek champion. In the third exhibit, their ocelot was either sleeping or a no-show on my two trips through the rainforest. So most of the action around here is in the middle habitat, from Riker the Clouded Leopard. Clouded leopards aren't big cats, and they aren't true small cats either. Instead, they are often viewed as a bridge species between the two groups of felines. The clouded leopard is also more arboreal than most cats, with rotating ankles that allow them to climb down trees headfirst like a squirrel. Cleveland received their first pair of clouded leopards from China in 1987. At times, the species has been displayed both here and in the Primate Cat and Aquatics building, but when he arrived in 2018, Riker was the first of his kind to live in Cleveland in seven years. Finally, some of you may recognize this last clip since Riker starred in the intro to my 2022 videos. Moving down the path, we come to the upper viewing of the habitat we briefly previewed downstairs. This temple-themed exhibit is home to the Francois Langour, including one of the zoo's newest little additions, who was born last August and is now almost done losing the orange coloration that they're born with. On the other side of the trail is an aviary holding the green aracari. And switching sides of the path again is a glass-fronted habitat that is once again home to the Prevo Squirrel. Also called the tricolored squirrel because of their three-color coat pattern, they can be found throughout Malaysia and a number of Indonesian islands. Prevo Squirrels are extremely agile arboreal animals feeding on fruit, nuts, seeds, flowers, insects, and bird eggs. Next to the squirrels is a pond for rainbow fish. And across from that, we've arrived at the stars of the rainforest, the zoo's family of Bornean orangutans. The family includes 37-year-old male Taram, who lives with two adult females, 36-year-old Kayla and 20-year-old Karawak, as well as his 8-year-old daughter Mara, 
but I spent most of my time watching little Zacky, the newest addition to the orangutan family who was born on April 28th, 2021. Baby orangutans remain with their mother for the first seven years of their life, which means that female orangutans can only have new offspring every seven to nine years, the longest birth interval of any land mammal. This is one of several reasons that wild orangutan populations have struggled to rebound. The Bornean orangutan is faring better than the other orangutan species, with around 100,000 left in the wild but they are still critically endangered due to increasing pressures of deforestation of the rainforest they call home. A crisis that is reflected in a display found in the lower forest which shows the growing human population alongside the decreasing remaining acres of rainforest. The final exhibit in the rainforest is one of the best in the building, a riverbank for Asian small clawed otters, the smallest and most terrestrial of the 13 otter species. The orangutans aren't the only ones around here with adorable babies, as the zoo's otter family has welcomed five pups since 2017. Small clawed otters are very social, typically living in extended family groups like the one found here, and don't let their cute appearance fool you, small clawed otters, like all otters, are carnivores, using their sharp canines to feed on smaller creatures like fish, mollusks, crabs, and frogs. This playful species is very intelligent and in some parts of the world they have been trained to hunt fish alongside humans. And that concludes the rainforest, or at least that concludes the rainforest for now. As soon as this year, construction will begin on a project that will dramatically transform and expand the existing rainforest over the next decade. While the details are still a little rough, the main focus of the improvements will be new, multi-level habitats for orangutans and gorillas, the latter of which will move over from the primate cat and aquatics building. The zoo community can look forward to the entire project being completed by the early 2030s. Thank you for joining me on our first tour of the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. For today's question of the video, let me know in the comments what is your favorite indoor rainforest building at a zoo. And as always, enjoy a preview of my next tour.